Hello, everyone. I'm Xu Tan, a senior researcher from Microsoft Research Asia. In this webinar, I will introduce our research work that aims to push the frontier of neural text-to-speech. Uh, before the sharing of this topic, I will be give a brief self-introduction. I am currently a senior researcher at Machine Learning Group in Microsoft Research Asia, and my research interests cover deep learning and its application on natural language, speech, and music processing. And the topics include text-to-speech, automatic speech recognition, neural machine translation, language speech pre-training, and music understanding and generation. And this is my homepage in Microsoft, and you can uh, follow more details and the research work uh, through this uh, homepage. And I also listed our project page for the speech-related research. And you can find some demo samples, especially for TTS research from this project page. And this is the outline of this uh, presentation, and many uh, consists of three parts. In the first part, I will give an overview of text-to-speech and briefly introduction, uh, uh, briefly introduce the text-to-speech synthesis. And in the second part, I will introduce our research work that aims to push the frontier of neural text-to-speech from different aspects. Uh, for the first aspect, we aim to speed up the inference of text-to-speech model uh, Therefore, so we uh, develop a, a series of uh, research work, include the fast, fast speech and the fast speech two, which are published in Neural IPS two years ago and this year's ICR. And we further develop a night speech, uh, which is published in this year's ICASP. And for the second aspect, we aim to build end-to-end -end TTS model so we developed the fast speech 2S, which is published along with fast speech 2 in this year's ICR. And in the third aspect, we aim to develop uh, the low resource text-to-speech uh, system that can build with few training data to support the TTS for low resource languages. Uh, so we developed the AR speech, which is published in last year's KDD. And for the first aspect, we aims to build the TTS uh, voice adapt adaptation for the custom voice scenario. So for this uh, scenario, we build a series of TTS research work, include other speech, other speech 2, and other speech 3, which are published in this year's ICR and ICASP. And other speech 3 is uh, in submission. And in the third part of this presentation, I will uh, have some discussion uh, on TTS and uh, make a summarization of this presentation. And let's start with the first part. I will uh, briefly introduce the text to speech synthesis. Uh, text to speech synthesis, which is short for a TTS, uh, refers to the artificial production of human speech from text. So the TTS, TTS technologies has a now have a known story. The early TTS system uh, is built on the concatenative speech synthesis, which concatenates uh, recorded speech pieces that are stored in a database. And later, some statistic parametric speech synthesis methods are proposed, which uh, use a statistic method, such as hidden Markov model or deep neural network to predict the acoustic features from some linguistic features, and then use the parametric vocoder to synthesize the speech waveform from the acoustic features. And later, as the development of deep learning, the neural network-based end-to-end speech synthesis uh, system are proposed, and which can greatly improve the naturalness and voice quality of the speech synthesis. Basically speaking, a text to speech synthesis require uh, interdisciplinary uh, technologies, including acoustics, linguistics, digital single processing, statistic method, and deep learning. Uh, next, I will give a brief uh, uh, introduction of neural based end to end speech synthesis. Uh, 
Neural-based end-to-end speech synthesis mainly consists of three components, as you can see from this finger. Uh, it follows the basic uh, model components from the statistic parametric synthesis. Uh, the first component is text analysis, uh, which convert the text sequence into a phoneme sequence. And it requires some functionalities, such as text normalization, which can normalize the non-standard text into standard text, such as the January, the, the abbreviation for January, and we can convert into the uh, fully text of January. And then we uh, conduct the graph into phoneme conversion that converts the uh, character sequence into the phoneme sequence, which can be better pronounced. And if the uh, one word have multiple pronunciations, we will do the polyform disambiguation to choose the right pronunciation in the context. And after we got the phoneme sequence, the acoustic model uh, converts the phoneme sequence into mirror spectrogram, which is the acoustic feature uh, for the speech. And the acoustic model is usually built on the uh, deep neural networks. Uh, some uh, famous works such as Tachung 2, uh, Deep Voice 3, Transformer TTS, and our fast speech and fast speech 2 uh, are a representative acoustic model. And after that, the vocoder convert the mirror spectrogram into speech waveform. And uh, different from the vocoder in the statistic parametric synthesis, the vocoder model uh, in the neural based uh, uh, text to speech synthesis. Uh, mainly adopt the neural-based model. And uh, some representative models that uh, in, include WaveNet, WaveRM, RPCNet, WaveGrow, and Mirgan. OK, so this is a, a brief introduction of text-to-speech. And uh, let's uh, go to the second part. Uh, we will introduce our research uh, work that can uh, push the frontier of neural text-to-speech. Uh, from the several aspects. So in the first aspects, I will introduce our work to speed up the inference of text-to-speech. So end-to-end -end neural TTS model uh, usually adopts the autoregressive mirror spectrum and waveform generation. However, the speech sequence is usually very long. Uh, for example, for one second speech, there are usually 500 a uh, friends of mirror spectrogram and 24,000 waveform points. So it is a very uh, long sequence. If you use the auto generation, uh, one point by one point or frame by frame, and the inference speed is very slow. Uh, as you can see from this finger, uh, this finger plots the relationship between the predicted mirror spectral length and the inference time. You can see that the inference time grows linearly with the length of the output sequence. And it means that if you have longer sequence, the inference time will be longer. So this is a problem. Uh, we, so we've proposed fast speech to address this problem to inference the, uh, 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 to speed up the inference. So let's briefly uh, overview the problems that fast speech tries to solve. Previous autoregressive TTS model uh, such as Tachung 2, uh, Deep Voice 3, and Transform TTS suffer from the following issues. The first issue is the slow inference speed because they all use the uh, autoregressive generation for the non speech sequence. And the second issue is not robust. The generative speech usually has uh, word skipping and repeating issues. So you can uh, hear this voice. So this voice is generated by the autoregressive Transform TTS model. You can call me directly at 425-70344 or myself 425-444474. Send me a me request with a request with appropriate 4444. Or so you can hear the Jerry's voice has a lot of skipping and repeating issues. And for the third issue, lack, uh, the third issue is lack of controllability. It is hard to control the voice speed and porosity in the autoregressive generation because the autoregressive generation generates the frame uh, one by one uh, automatically. So uh, to solve this uh, problems, we propose fast speech. As shown in the right finger, uh, this is a, a model structure of fast speech. 
Uh, there are three key designs in fast speech. The first is we use a, a fit forward transformer network to generate the mirror spectrum in parallel. That means that means we do not use the conventional uh, auto regressive uh, encoder attention decoder model. So uh, this greatly speed up the inference. And the second design is that we remove the text to speech attention mechanism between the uh, phone encoder and the spectrum decoder. Uh, because we found a lot of repeating and skipping issues are due to the incorrect attention alignment. So we totally rem removed the attention mechanism. Instead, we use a fit forward transformer with less regulator to build, build the alignment between the text and speech. And as a byproduct, it can be used to control the duration of the synthesis of speech because we can adjust the predicted duration uh, shorter or longer, which can result in the voice with a quicker or slower speed. So as a summary, so fast speech has the following advantages. The first is extremely fast. Fast speech can have 270 times inference speed up on mirror spectrum generation and 38 times speed up on final waveform generation. And the second uh, advantage is robust. The generated voice by fast speech has no bad case of word skipping and repeating. And third is controllable. We can control the voice speed and proxy uh, through fast speech model. And last but not the least, uh, fast speech can achieve on par or better uh, voice quality than the previous day of the art mo TTS models. So you can uh, follow this link to uh, hear the demo samples to read the fast speech. So in terms of product deployment, fast speech has, be has been deployed on Microsoft Azure uh, speech service to so so support the TTS for 54 languages and locales. So you can find from this table, uh, uh, so FastPitch has uh, supported the, the 54 uh, different language and locales. And you can also uh, uh, follow this uh, link of Microsoft Azure Cognitive Service to try the uh, TTS service that are powered by FastPitch. So now I will give a, a short demo uh, uh, to show the voice generated by our Azure speech service and powered by FastPitch. OK. This is a demo page of Microsoft uh, Azure Text-to-Speech Service. And in this text box, you can input any text, and then our engine will synthesize the speech in real time. And so we can have a, a, a short try. So I will type the text. Uh, Text-to-Speech Synthesis is interesting. OK, and then uh, we can choose different languages. So by default, we use uh, uh, English. And we can choose different voice and also different uh, voice style or speaking speed and pitch. So we can play. Text-to-speech synthesis is interesting. Yeah, you can hear the Jared voice. And uh, maybe we can change some a different uh, uh, style, such as a question, so we can hear the voice. Text-to-speech synthesis is interesting. So you can hear the, the, the tone of this sentence is changed. So I, I can, yeah, as a short test. Text-to-speech synthesis is interesting. Oh, yes. And you can also change the speaking uh, speed, so I, so I change the speed to be quicker. Text to speech synthesis is interesting. Oh, yes. And yeah, maybe too quick. Text to speech synthesis is interesting. Oh, yes. And you can also uh, higher or lower the pitch. So, if we, for example, I will uh, lower the pitch. Text to speech synthesis is interesting. Oh, yes. OK. And you can also use other uh, uh, speakers, such as Chinese. Uh, to uh, generate the, the English speech. Text to speech synthesis is interesting. Oh, yes. So it, it can uh, synthesize the English speech using the Chinese style. OK, this is uh, all about fast speech. 
And next, we introduce an uh, advanced version of FastSpeech, FastSpeech 2. Although FastSpeech has achieved good success in both research and product, it still has improvement space. Uh, there are some problems in uh, FastSpeech. The first is the training pipeline is complicated because FastSpeech fast uses a two-stage teacher-student destination. And second issue is the target is not good because the target merit spectrum grant used by FastSpeech is distilled from a teacher that suffers from uh, information loss. And the third is that the duration is tracked from the uh, attention map of a teacher model and the duration is not accurate. Uh, so we propose fast speech two and to improve the uh, uh, issues in fast speech by the following uh, aspects. The first is uh, we simplify the training pipeline, remove the teacher student destination and only only use one stage uh, training that use the ground truth uh, speech as a target. So this can also avoid the information loss of the uh, distilled uh, target merit spectrogram. And the third that is that we improve the duration from a, an alignment tool and at the same time we introduce more variance information to ease the one-to-many mapping problem. So here we introduce what is uh, one-to-many mapping in TTS. So the one-to-many mapping refers to that there are multiple speech variations corresponding to the same text. These variations include the duration, uh, pitch, sound volume, speaker style, and emotion. So uh, if there are not enough information to predict this uh, speech variations, the model tends to uh, overfit. So by providing more information, such as the duration, pitch, and sound volume as inputs, then the one-to-many mapping problem can be uh, converted into uh, one-to-one mapping problem. This can ease the model training and improve the generation ability of the TTS model. So this is a, a model structure of fast speech two, and we uh, use a variance adapter between the phony encoder and the mesh spectrum decoder. And the variance adapter contains uh, different variance predictors to predict the duration, pitch, and energy information. During, train during training, the de mesh spectrum decoder takes the uh, ground truth uh, duration and pitch energy values as input. But in inference, it takes uh, uh, predicted values from this variance predictor uh, for inference. Uh, fast speech two improve fast speech with the following aspects. The first is more simplified training pipeline. And the second is higher voice quality because we provide more accurate duration information and more accurate uh, uh, target and also more variance information. And we can maintain the advantages of fast robust and even more controllable since this is in fast speech. You can follow this demo page to hear the sample uh, generated by fast speech 2. And the fast speech 2 is also deployed on Microsoft Azure TTS service. So you can uh, also follow this link to try uh, Microsoft Azure TTS service. Okay, next uh, I will introduce an even faster TTS model, light speech. So uh, here we uh, briefly introduce the background uh, of night speech. Uh, deploying TTS model in mobile forms or embedded devices requires extremely small memory usage and inference latency. Uh, also, fast speech can achieve a significant inference speed up, but it is not enough for the scenario of embedded devices because it still has uh, a lot of model um, size and computation. So uh, further speeding up the um, inference of fast speech and reducing the model size are necessary. So we propose uh, light speech. We mainly use the neural architecture search to search for lightweight and efficient architectures. Here we use a famous, uh, uh, a, a, a good uh, neural architecture uh, uh, search algorithm, GPT-NAS, uh, for the search. As you can see from uh, uh, this table, uh, compared with fast speech two, uh, light speech uh, can has have a uh, much fewer model parameters. It can reduce the parameter by 15 times, and can also reduce the computation by 16 times. And in in terms of the inference speed, it can speed up uh, by uh, 6.5 times. 
And in terms of the voice quality, as you can see from this finger, light speech can uh, show on par uh, voice quality with fast speech too, but with much fewer parameters and computations and um, faster inference. Uh, as a comparison, we can uh, directly reduce the model size of fast speech too uh, to match the uh, size of light speech. And you can see the quality uh, drops largely. So this can demonstrate the effective of the effectiveness of light speech uh, uh, for the lightweight and efficient TDS synthesis. And you can also follow this demo link to uh, hear the demo samples generated by light speech. Okay, by now we have finished, uh, we have inter finished the introduction of the uh, first aspect, inference speed up. And next, uh, I will introduce our work to build the fully end-to-end -end TDS model, fast speech 2S. So before the introduction of our work, I will give a brief a background of uh, the engine TDS model. So the advantages of engine TDS model uh, is that we requ it requires less human pre-processing and feature development. And because we can train the model in an end-to-end -end and joint way, so we can remove the error propagation in the conversional cascaded TDS model, which consists of, consists of text analysis, acoustic model, and a vocoder. And it can also reduce the training, uh, development, and the deployment cost uh, to build the TDS systems. However, there are great challenges to build the end-to-end -end TDS model. The main challenge is that the learning difficulty uh, from text uh, to waveform. Uh, uh, because the text and waveform are in different modalities and the sequence lengths are, are, uh, have large mismatch. Because, uh, uh, for example, for text sequence with 20 award uh, and, and by the corresponding switch form, uh, the corresponding speech, for, uh, speech waveform uh, can have 100 of thousand waveform points. So if we want to put the whole utterance of the speech waveform uh, into the model training in a single batch, it will require a huge memory and computation cost. This causes uh, uh, difficulty to train the ancient TDS model. And actually, uh, as the development of near based TTS, the model uh, is progressively becoming end-to-end. -end. So this uh, fingers shows uh, uh, this process of progressively end-to-end. -end. Uh, the first, uh, uh, the early TTS system uh, uses three components. And the first, uh, the upper finger shows the component components used in the statistic parametric synthesis. It consists of three components, text analysis, analysis, acoustic model, and vocoder. And later, some entrant models, such as WaveNet, combines the acoustic model and the vocoder together into a single neural model that directly generates speech uh, from the linguistic features. And this can simplify the pipeline uh, further. And later, some models, such as Tactron 2 and Deep Voice 3, uh, propose uh, the a more clean uh, neural-based model that simplify the linguistic features and acoustic features. So they only generate the following sequence from the text uh, uh, from the text through the text analysis component, and use a neural-based acoustic model to generate the mesh spectrum from the following sequence, and then use a neural-based vocoder to generate speech uh, from the mesh spectrogram. And later, uh, some fully end-to-end uh, -end TS model is proposed that can directly generate the speech uh, from the text, uh, such as a model clarinet or chat wave. And next, I will introduce uh, our model, FastP2S, uh, which is uh, the first TTS model with fully parallel text-to-wave uh, uh, generation. Uh, that means that uh, unlike the previous entrant model, chat wave or clarinet, a fast speech 2S can fully generate the waveform from text in parallel. Uh, because we can see that the chart wave or current net uh, generates the acoustic features or the waveform uh, in an autoregressive uh, way. But our model can uh, generate all the waveform in parallel, which can speed up the inference. Um, in order to achieve the end-to-end -end model training and generation, 
we use a use the adversarial training for the waveform generation and add an auxiliary mirror spectrum decoder to improve the representation learning. And you can uh, follow more details of, our, uh, of the FASTPH2S uh, from our paper. Okay, next, uh, we will introduce our research work to be the low resource TTS uh, system that can be uh, applied to support the uh, low resource languages. And we first introduce the background of the low resource TTS. Uh, there are uh, 7,000 languages in the world, but the popular commercialized speech service such as Microsoft Azure, uh, Google Cloud, and AWS only support dozens of languages. There, are, there is strong business demand to support more language in the TTS uh, not only for business, but also uh, for the social goods, because there are uh, so many uh, languages in the world, and, and and a lot of languages are are in danger. However, the data collection cost is very high for this extremely low resource languages. For example, we have some uh, statistics and calculation that to build one low resource language, the minimal data labeling cost. Uh, will be one meaning. Uh, so if we want to support so many languages, that, that will cost a lot of uh, money. So we uh, propose AR speech uh, to be the low resource uh, TTS and also ASR systems. So AR speech consists of uh, three stages. Uh, the, in the first stage, we leverage the language transfer so that we can pre-train the TTS and ASR model uh, from the rich resource languages and then fine tuning the models on the low resource languages. So this uh, leverages the fact that the human languages share similar pronunciations and the rich resource language data is relatively easy to get. And after we obtain the uh, pre-trained model and, uh, and fine tuning on this model, uh, in the second step, we leverage the uh, text-to-speech and automatic speech recognition models to help uh, with each other. So this can leverage the task duality uh, of these two tasks with the unpaired speech and text data and can boost the performance of the two models uh, gradually and iteratively. And after the first two steps, we have already got a, a good TDS and SR model. And in the third step, we can customize these models for product deployment uh, with knowledge destination. It can uh, improve the accuracy uh, of the TTS and ASR by data knowledge destination. And we can also customize the multi-speaker TTS uh, to a target single speaker TTS, and which can be used for the product scenario and also uh, to customize to a smaller model such as fast speech. So this is a pipeline of uh, AR speech, and here it shows the experiment results of AR speech. We conducted we conduct the experiments on the pseudo low resource language English and the truly low resource language Pennsylvania. And you can see that AR speech can achieve a high intelligibility rate and a MOS score. And you can uh, follow this uh, demo page to hear the uh, samples generated by AR speech. And we also show the uh, data cost to build a low resource TTS system of different uh, uh, low resource uh, TTS research works. As you can see that our AR speech can greatly reduce the data cost compared with uh, previous works uh, nearly by 100 times. And AR speech uh, has already been employed in Microsoft Azure text-to-speech service to support the uh, five uh, new low resource languages, uh, including Maltese, Lithuania, Estonia, Irish, and Natovia. Uh, and you can follow this page to uh, follow the more details of our low resource languages supported by our techniques. And here we, comes to, we come to the uh, last uh, topic, a TTS voice adaptation, and we will introduce our research work at a speech uh, series. And here we briefly introduce the background. A customer voice is an important service in text-to-speech. Uh, 
some popular uh, speech cloud service such as Microsoft Azure, uh, Google, Google Cloud, or AWS all support the uh, customer voice service. So in the customer voice, voice scenario, uh, it aims to support the TTS uh, for the voice of any users or customers. So in this scenario, the users need to record their voice with their own devices, but usually with a few sentences. And then they can upload their recorded voice to the speech service for voice adaptation. And uh, the speech service can adapt the, the a very trained TTS model with this field adaptation data, and then the TTS model can support the voice uh, for this uh, user or customers, and then the speech service serve this model uh, for the inference. In this scenario, uh, there are a lot of uh, challenges. So we summarize the challenges in this, scenario, in this scenario, and we conduct the corresponding research uh, to address these challenges. Uh, the first challenge is that usually in the customer voice uh, scenario, the user usually record a few adaptation data. And, uh, and also we need to use few adaptation parameters to support the, the uh, single speaker, because if we want to support uh, as many user or customers as possible, uh, if, we want, if we use too many adaptation parameters, the total memory storage uh, will be huge. And uh, another issue is that usually the voice recorded by the user uh, have uh, have different acoustic conditions that they can record it use their own devices in their own noisy environment or using their own uh, speaker uh, speaking styles. So these acoustic conditions are very different from the, the speech data that we used to train the source TTS model. So for these challenges, we propose other speech uh, which is published in this year's ICR. And for the second challenge, uh, because usually we can easily get the untranscribed speech of the user, but not the paired text, to, uh, text and speech data of this user. Uh, for example, we can usually get the data uh, of this user in the online meetings or conversations without the corresponding transcrip transcription. So how can we leverage the plenty of untranscribed speech for the adaptation so we propose other speech tool uh, uh, to uh, solve these challenges. And uh, usually, for the third challenge, uh, usually our speech are recorded in the reading style. But usually in our daily conversations or in the talks, in the uh, podcast or, or, or online speech, our speech are usually spontaneous. That means there are a lot of uh, different uh, reason patterns or the uh, fade pauses such as um or are in the speech. But currently the, tech, the TTS technology is mainly for reading style speech. And uh, to support the spontaneous speech, uh, 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 it is challenging. So in for the third challenge, we propose other speech three uh, to support the TTS for spontaneous styles, uh, which is in a paper submission. And, and next I will briefly introduce the three works. Uh, the first is other speech. So for the ad adaptation scenario, we mainly use a, a three-stage pipeline that we first train a, a, a source TTS model on the large-scale multi-speaker speech data, and then fine-tune the uh, well-trained TTS model on, a, on the few adaptation data for a specific uh, user or speaker, and then use this adaptation model for the inference for this uh, speaker. And so, I will recap these two challenges as we uh, mentioned before. The first is to support diverse customers. The adaptation model needs to handle diverse acoustic conditions, which are very different from the source speech data. And the second is that we want to support uh, a lot of uh, customer users as possible. We need to reduce the adaptation parameters. For example, if each user or voice uh, uh, needs uh, 100 MB, uh, storage uh, for the adapt adaptation parameters. If we want to support 1 million users, the total memory storage, uh, storage would be 100 PB. So th that is a huge storage. Um, however, the previous work either have too many adaptation parameters or uh, have too 
poor adapting quality with few uh, parameters. And one important issue is that the only considered source and the adapting data are in the same domain. So we propose other speech. And this finger shows the uh, uh, model structure of other speech. And it is built on the basic model structure of, uh, of fast speech two, but designed to uh, key components to address the challenges. The first is uh, the acoustic condition modeling, uh, that it can model the diverse acoustic conditions at a different level, such as speaker utterance and phoneme levels, and which can ensure the model can support the different uh, acoustic conditions for the speech uploaded by the uh, user or speaker. And the second component is condition normalization in the mirror spectrum decoder. It uses uh, 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 some uh, linear layer to calculate the scale and the bias in the layer normalization from the speaker embedding. So by this way, we can fine tune as a smaller parameter as possible while ensuring the uh, good voice quality. And we also consider the adapting data as in different uh, uh, acoustic conditions uh, from the source data. This is more challenging, but close uh, to the product scenario. And here is your the experiment results. Um, we train the source TTS model on the liberal TTS data set and uh, adapt to the urgent speech with TK and the liberal TTS data set with 20 sentences for each uh, speaker. And you can see from this table that other speech can achieve better quality with similar parameters. Uh, and achieve on par quality with much fewer adaption parameters compared with uh, the previous baseline. And you can also follow this demo link to hear the sample series by other speech. And you can see that other speech has already been deployed in Microsoft Azure uh, speech to support the custom voice scenario. And you can also follow this link to try the custom voice supported by Microsoft Azure speech. And here we go to the uh, next uh, work, other speech two. As we mentioned before, other speech two is mainly to support the adaptation with untranscript data because uh, we can easily get a lot of untranscript data, but not the text and, and speech pair data. So we design our four-step uh, pipeline to support the uh, adaptation with untranscript speech and mainly use the speech reconstruction with the latent alignment. In the first step, uh, we use, we regularly train our uh, source TTS model with multi-speaker uh, data. And in the second step, we use another mirror spectrum encoder and to conduct the re speech reconstruction uh, with the mirror spectrum decoder, but we only uh, uh, train the parameters of the mirror spectrum en encoder. And this, and at the same time, we constrain the latent from the phony encoder and the mirror spectrum encoder uh, to uh, be the same uh, space. So this can ensure that the mirror encoder can be an auxiliary component, but but not drive the latent space uh, uh, far away from the uh, original TTS model. And in the third step, we conduct the speaker adaptation that we still use the a speech reconstruction uh, for the uh, with the untranscribed speech data, and in th in this uh, step we only adapt the mirror spectrum decoder, but fix the mirror uh, spectrum encoder, because we in the sec second step we uh, have re already constrained the latent space of the two encoders uh, in the same space. So uh, after what we adapt the mirror spectrum encoder, uh, mirror spectrum decoder based on the mirror spectrum encoder, we can easily uh, inference the speech uh, based on the phony encoder. So in the first step, we can uh, use the original phony encoder and mirror decoder to inference the speech. And this table shows the uh, experiment results. We uh, still train our uh, source TTM, TTS model on the liberal TTS and adapt it to the RG speech and with TK with 50 untranscribed uh, sentence. And you can see from this finger that other speech achieves, uh, other speech two achieves better quality than previous methods and achieves on par quality with the untranscript adaptation. Here we use the other speech as a baseline. That means that we can only use the untranscript speech uh, to achieve the on par quality with the transcript uh, data. And you can also uh, follow this demo link to 
to hear the demo samples generated by FastSpeech 2. And next, I will briefly go through the third work, RSPeech 2, uh, RSPeech 3, to support the spontaneous style speech synthesis. You can see that the current TTS um, voice mostly focus on the reading style speech. Uh, but spontaneous style voice is useful for the scenario like our daily conversations. Uh, but there are some challenges to support the spontaneous style. Uh, the first is the lack of spontaneous data because usually our data set is recorded in the, in, uh, in the recording studio, which is a reading style, but not the, uh, usually the daily conversation, the freestyle. And there are also difficulty in modeling the distinctive characteristics uh, in the uh, spontaneous speech, such as the fit pauses. Uh, uh, such as a break like um or ah, uh, or the diverse reasons, because in the spontaneous styles, people usually uh, lengthen or shorten their, their word or increase or decrease the pitch uh, of the speech. So you can hear this voice uh, in spontaneous style. Accessory package and all of that. Um, yeah. So. So you can hear that there are uh, some fit powders such as the N or some some word ye and there are long break between the uh, the words. So it's very different from the normal reading style speech. So for these two challenges, we propose a corresponding uh, component to solve these issues. Uh, for the lack of spontaneous data, we propose a method to mine the spontaneous data set from the website uh, and also, considering the lack of training data, we still build the spontaneous TTS model uh, through the adaptation uh, way that we can train the our source TTS model on the multi-speaker reading style uh, speech data and then fine-tuning the model uh, with the spontaneous style. That, that can only require few spontaneous uh, speech data uh, to ensure the model can generate this, this, this style. And, uh, and to solve the second challenge, we design some specific uh, model structure uh, to predict the failed pauses and the, uh, to model the diverse reasons. And this table shows the statistics of our uh, mined data set. We mainly come, consist of uh, three subsets uh, for the failed pauser, uh, adaptation and the reason adaptation and the temporary adaptation. And this model structure shows the um, uh, model of the other species uh, three, and we mainly build the uh, model structure based on other speech and use the FP predictor to insert some um, fit powers such as M or R in the text sequence and use the uh, some mixture of expert based duration predictor to adapt the reasons and also uh, adapt the speaker temporal that can synthesize the voice for the any uh, target speaker that was spontaneous style. And for the experiment results, you can see that other species three can achieve better voice quality and similarity than the previous baseline method such as other speech. Uh, uh, in this scenario, other speech can uh, just use a conversional adaptive pipeline to adapt the voice for the spontaneous TTS. And you can hear some uh, samples. Uh, again, for these samples, uh, we can first hear the uh, uh, ground truth audio. Accessory package and all of that. Um, yeah. So. Okay, for this text, we can hear the voice. Uh, generated by other speech. Cecily package and all of that. Um, yeah, so. Uh, yes, you can you can hear the uh, the speech is not so natural, and you can hear the voice generated by other speech three. Cecily package and all of that. Um, yeah, so. So you can hear that the voice generated by other speech three can have very natural uh, fit pauses and the break. And it, it, it's very similar to the spontaneous style that are used in the daily uh, conversations. And we, we can also insert some fit pauses uh, into the text, which is which originally uh, does not have the uh, fit pauses. And we can hear the voice before the uh, fit pauses in, insertion. 
Six spoons of fresh snow peas, five thick slabs of blue cheese, and maybe a snack for her brother Bob. And we can hear the voice after we insert the feed powders. Six spoons of fresh snow peas, um, five thick slabs of blue cheese, and maybe a snack for her brother Bob. Okay, so after we insert the feed powders, this the speech can uh, sound more spontaneous. Okay, by now we have uh, finished the uh, introduction of the main uh, part that our research work to push the frontier of neurotext-to-speech. And in the uh, second part, I will uh, have some uh, short discussion and um, make, a summary, some, make a summary for our presentation. And here I want to uh, briefly discuss about uh, our TTS research, uh, how to shift our TTS research frontier to consider the product scenario. And this table uh, shows some uh, difference uh, between the TTS research and the product deployment. And usually for the TTS research, we mainly consider the research work is non-trivial and useful, and usually cares more about the novelty and deep investigation on the non-trivial solutions. So. Uh, the advantages of, of the of the research lies in their principle, and also uh, in the good experiment results, and is uh, more store driven to solve our scientific problems. But for the product, it cares more about the practic practically useful, uh, even if it is not novel or non-trivial, but it is useful. And it, it, it also requires 99.99% uh, usability, but not the cherry pick good cases. So it, it, it is mainly for practical deployment. So uh, basically speaking, it is more difficult to solve a product problem than publishing a paper. So for, for example, maybe you just need three months to rush a good paper, but it takes one year to ship it into the product. Uh, however, I'm not saying that research uh, is not important. Research has its great value and is in irreplaceable for the TTS uh, uh, product scenario. We just need to uh, take the practical usage into consideration during our TTS research. So here are some aspects that we can consider uh, when we're conducting our TTS research. Uh, the first aspect uh, is that uh, for the product scenario, we still care about the voice quality. That we can improve the intelligibility, naturalness, robustness, expressiveness, and the contributivity of the synthesis uh, voice. So the model may be not fully entrained, but need to be accurate. And so um, the the fully entrained model uh, may discard the the text normalization and the graphing to phoneme conversion. But by uh, so far the this component is very important to ensure the accuracy of the pronunciation uh, in product scenario. And uh, because the product scenario cares more about the, um, the usability, so we can uh, it conduct more research work to avoid the bad cases such as uh, glitches, or hoarseness, or metallic nausea, a jitter or pitch break in the synthesis speech. And we can also consider some other practice scenarios, such as a non-form paragraph, uh, paragraph reading with emotion or the spontaneous style. And for the, another aspect, that we can reduce the development cost, because if we want to serve the model online or in the product scenario, uh, the develop, development cost is a, is, a, is a major work. So, for example, we can build a universal multi-speaker, multi-lingual, multi-style TTS model and only fine tune this model to any product scenario. This can save a lot of our engineering work. And we uh, need also care about the inference latency, the memory usage, and the computation cost. Uh, when we deploy, deploy the TTS model in the server or especially in the edge devices. And we also need to consider the data efficiency how can we develop, develop, develop the model to build the high quality TTS system, but with fewer uh, speech data? And to enhance the ecology of the TTS uh, uh, product scenario, we can also conduct some 
uh, consider some extended scenarios such as the singing voice synthesis and talking face uh, synthesis. This is uh, the uh, great extension of the TTS uh, uh, conversion in TTS scenario. So as a summary of this presentation, uh, TTS technology evolves from concatenative synthesis, statistic parametric synthesis, and neural-based end-to-end synthesis. And the mainstream TTS model uses separate acoustic model and the vocoder model, but the fully end-to-end model uh, is on the way, and a lot of research work are conducting in this uh, direction. And uh, for the practical, practical usage, improving the quality while reducing the cost is always the goal of TTS. So the quality includes uh, the intelligibility, naturalness, robustness, expressiveness, and contributivity. And for the cost, we can reduce the engineering cost by such as be building the internet TTS model or the surfing cost to speed up the inference or the data cost. We can build the low resource TTS system uh, uh, to build a model with uh, fewer data. And research is the engine for TTS improvement. And at the same time, uh, this engine should take care, uh, to, should take the pra practical usage into consideration. Okay, so this is the uh, all uh, of this presentation. And this page shows a, a paper list of our uh, research work uh, and introduced in this presentation. And this page shows our uh, research work on speech. Okay, that's all. And this is the end of the, this presentation. And later, uh, we will have a 15 minutes uh, Q&A session and welcome uh, the questions and discussions. Thank you. Uh, okay. So this is the end of this uh, uh, talk, and thank you for your watching. And now we uh, come in to the QA session. Uh, so uh, I saw there are a lot of uh, questions uh, during the uh, video presentation. So I have already answered some of the questions. And in this uh, QA session, I will uh, uh, describe more details about some of the, these questions. Uh, uh, so uh, for the questions about, uh, okay, from Gezhou, uh, University of Rochester. So the question is that uh, instead of using a teacher model to extract the durations for the phone lines, how to get around, uh, get get the ground truth durations in fast speech too? So uh, yeah, I, I think it is a very good question because uh, in text to speech, uh, the duration is very important because the input sequence is text and the output sequence is speech. The length of the two sequences is very uh, different. So uh, for the sequence-to-sequence uh, uh, -sequence modeling, uh, because you, you can see that TTS is, is, a, is, a basic, is a basic text sequence-to-sequence uh, -sequence problem, uh, we need to model the length mismatch. So you can see that in the autoregressive uh, model, such as the encoder attention decoder, they use the attention uh, to uh, connect the text and speech, uh, even if they have a differentness. Uh, but in the non-autoregressive generation, uh, so in the parallel generation such as fast speech or fast speech two, because we need to generate the speech in parallel, so we need to uh, we need the duration to uh, expand the text to match to the length of the speech. So. Here we need to get a duration. So actually, there are a lot of methods to get a duration. So it's very uh, common. Uh, it's a common issue in the co uh, conversional uh, TTS model. So before the uh, deep learning comes out, uh, we have the TTS has uh, has a long history uh, to use the uh, uh, statistic uh, parametric synthesis. So so the duration prediction is also a problem in statistic parametric synthesis. So I have answered the question uh, writing a test about the, the, the different methods about the duration model, such as uh, ASR uh, model or HMM model or CDC model. So basically the ASR model or HMM based model or CDC model is, uh, is, uh, is all about the, it's very like the, uh, it's very similar to the automatic, automatic speech recognition. So basically you, 
can input the text and speech, so the ASR model can uh, get the alignment, such as the uh, hidden Markov model or the CTC, because the CTC path can uh, automatically uh, calculate the alignment between the text and speech. Uh, so in fast speech tool, we use an open source tool uh, uh, called Material uh, Force Alignment. It, it is uh, it is based on the HMM uh, model. And there are a lot, so for TDS, for the uh, neural based TDS, there are a lot of uh, other works to design uh, other alignments between text and speech, uh, such as uh, the uh, work from DeepMind. Uh, the, the paper title is End to End Adversarial Text to Speech. So they design another kind of alignment that it, uh, can be trained uh, with the TTS model or the uh, work such as Glow TTS. They design another method called monotonic alignment search uh, to search the alignment between the text use a, you, 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 using a, a dynamic programming method. So. Uh, for the alignment modeling, it's, it's, a, it's a very uh, big uh, problem or, or big topic in TTS. Uh, yeah, so if you have interest, you can uh, to uh, get more details or to find some more papers about how to model the alignment in TTS. And uh, so for the next question uh, about the training data. So uh, yeah, because you can see in this presentation, uh, we have uh, uh, introduced different scenarios for the TTS, uh, such as the normal TTS. That, uh, uh, so for the fast speech or fast speech two, uh, we conduct ex experiments in the public LGSP dataset. So it is a dataset that consists of uh, more than 20 uh, hours speech data and high quality and single speaker data. But uh, we also introduce uh, settings in the low resource scenario. That, that there are there are a very limited pair data, maybe just uh, several minutes or uh, dozens of minutes. So in this scenario, we can also build a, a TTS model. So we can leverage some techniques such as uh, leverage the pre-training from other uh, uh, languages because language in speech all share similar uh, uh, characteristics. So they can, they can transfer uh, uh, from other languages. And, and in other scenarios, such as the TTS was adaptation. So in this scenario, uh, because we have already have some training data for one language, but uh, we do not have so much data for a certain speaker. So in this uh, scenario, maybe for this target speaker, we just need uh, several seconds of speech. Uh, and then it is enough to adapt the source model to support the target speaker. So uh, you can see that for different scenarios, the data requirements uh, are different. But, but, but for, uh, basically speaking, for industry uh, model or for uh, such as uh, for the model used in Azure, uh, so Microsoft Azure TTS service, so the data, <laughs> yeah, usually is very, very large. So they com combine all the data to, to train a very, very large model. So the uh, quality will be stable and, and be uh, robust. Uh, to any uh, scenarios. Okay, uh, and for the uh, next questions, uh, uh, yep, from Xin Ran Zhang. So the question uh, 15. So uh, when designing the neural acoustic model for fast speech 2, uh, is there any consideration of inductive bias that specifically uh, address uh, or distinguish between phoning duration and pitch? Uh, yeah, I, I think, I, I think, yeah. Uh, so there is some inductive bias because, uh, in, so you can see that in fast speech, we do not consider the, uh, uh, pitch or some other information. Uh, uh, but in fast speech two, we have a specific design for this acoustic feature, such as, uh, duration and, uh, pitch and uh, energy. Uh, because you can see that for uh, in speech, uh, you can uh, factorize the content or the 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 information in a, in speech into different uh, categories, uh, including the content. The content means what you see. 
So it is related related about the it it it's uh, related to the text or the following sequence. It's about what what to say, and the second aspect is about how it's 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 about how to say. Uh, that means uh, you can use uh, uh, which paper or which uh, timber uh, to to say uh, this voice. And the other aspect is about prosody. So how to say. So, so the second is who to say. Who to say is about the, the speaker characteristics. But the third aspect is, is how to say. Then how to say, uh, we usually refer it, it to uh, it as a prosody. And the prosody uh, basically consists of uh, different features such as pitch. Pitch uh, refers how, uh, so the frequency you can say in the voice and the duration. That means that you, how how long you can say uh, each phoneme? So actually, uh, we uh, uh, indeed uh, leverage the inductive bias because uh, for a prosody, it can uh, basically consist of pitch, uh, duration, and energy because energy is uh, related related to the volume, the sound volume of the speech. Uh, yeah. So so this is all about the inductive bias. I, I think it, it is very it, it is a good uh, way or. Uh, uh, good thinking about how to leverage the induct inductive bias of a speech uh, to address or to model the uh, speech synthesis aware because uh, simply using the neural model is not enough uh, to address uh, uh, challenges in text to speech or the speech problem. Uh, we need to to uh, investigate or go deep into the uh, characteristics of the speech itself, and, and then in that way you can uh, design more powerful method to address the problems. And uh, for the uh, next questions, uh, so how can we distinguish fast speech, other speech, and nice speech uh, while using speech SDK? Is there any example project? Uh, which provides all types of uh, speech example. Uh, yeah, so <laughs> yeah, it's a good question because uh, if people are not familiar, or if people, uh, so uh, you, you can basically uh, d divide the, the works uh, from two aspects. The first is uh, for research, and the second uh, for the SDK, it, it is for product or for industry uh, usage. Uh, basically speaking, fast speech, other speech, or AR speech, or some other light speech, this is just the name of a research work. Uh, yeah, so the research work is focused on uh, uh, addressing uh, specific uh, problems. But in terms of a product, I think uh, you can see that a fast speech or light speech, they are addressing a problem that you need to generate a speech in fast speed or in night with model so you can serve in the industry uh, online service uh, such as microsoft azure uh, uh TTS service because in the online service if the if the model is very uh, slow or very huge uh, the latency is very uh, big so we cannot afford this latency so basically we are addressing this problem in the online serving so about the uh, sdk so you maybe a jury you can uh, follow this link to try the the uh, speech service uh, to to try the so I can just send the link here so I'm not sure if you can uh, say the message so the, the link I I send so this is the uh, uh, page of the Microsoft Azure speech service. Uh, so from this service, you can find a lot of uh, different uh, service for TTS. Basically, uh, it is API uh, uh, like I just play in the video. So I have shown some case or demo cases using the uh, with uh, API. So you can try uh, this API. So a this API is basically the 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 ensemble of all the techniques. So as you can see, the fast speech, other speech, light speech. So they are addressing each specific problems, but they are all integrated into the, this Azure ser uh, service. And then you can uh, uh, try this service through this, this API. And, and, and for other speech, uh, because it is for the customer voice scenario. So that means that you can uh, adapt the voice, uh, adapt the TTS model uh, to a certain speaker, uh, maybe just using 
a several sec seconds uh, speech or five sentence or 20 sentence, then you can get the uh, TTS model to support your voice. Uh, so we also have uh, has another uh, uh, homepage uh, for the customer voice. And uh, now we are, uh, so so it is, uh, it is, it is general, uh, available. So the customers can try the service by providing uh, their recorded data to adapt the model to their voice. Okay. So I, I, I hope that this can answer your questions about the uh, speech SDK. Okay. So uh, now, so if you have, I think I have go through all the uh, questions. So if you have some uh, further uh, questions, you can uh ask uh in this portal uh, uh yeah so i can um, continue uh to uh describe or something about this uh presentation or talk uh, because in this talk you can see that i just mentioned uh, some of, of some of the uh, challenges in text to speech including uh building the fast uh, tts or the uh lowest of tts or the uh, TTS was adaptation or the end-to-end -end TTS. Actually, there are a lot of open problems in text-to-speech service, uh, uh, text-to-speech text -to service that need us to uh, address. Uh, such as, so the maybe the one of the most important question or uh, the the problem in TTS is about the core quality, the quality of the singing voice or the exp expressiveness. Uh, because you can see the uh, speech generation is uh, is about content generation, so we care more about the quality or the emotion or the style of the generated speech if it is similar to the human speech. Because now you can maybe when you try uh, when you use in the uh, TTS service, uh, maybe not uh, only Microsoft but other uh, TTS service, you can you can maybe you can easily uh, distinguish. That oh okay this this voice is generated by a machine and this voice is generated by human so you can easily distinguish the machine generated speech and the human speech so this is what we need to do to improve the naturalness the emotion the the expressiveness to make it more similar to the human or uh, uh, for example if you uh, try the service that the the uh, audio book so there are some app that you can hear the the, so you can listen the book, uh, the the audio book, and so some some app have tried the TTS service to read the book, and then you can just listen instead of reading or, or reading the book. So, uh, but but the problem is that when you're reading a non paragraph, uh, because the the the, the voice generated by the TTS uh, model uh, do not have. Uh, too much changes, so you are you you will quickly feel boring because there are no changes. But a human, you you can you can you can see that if a human reading a book, there will be emotion, and there will be a uh, change ch uh, or, or or variations or some something like that. So you can feel more comfortable or or, or feel more good about about reading by human, but not reading by uh, uh, TTS model. So a lot of work has come back to how to control or uh, control the emotion or the improve the expressiveness. Uh, so if you have um, interest in this area, uh, uh, or you want to try some do some research work uh, in the uh, TTS domain, so you can yeah you can go into more details about the uh, problems. Uh, Actually, we uh, in this uh, uh, maybe in the coming uh, several weeks we we uh, we will publish a more uh, details about the uh, a paper about the how to address the questions in T TTS uh, uh, scenario. It's about it's more about a comprehensive summary about about the current status of the TTS uh, research. And if you have interest, you can. Uh, you can yep uh, 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 keep an eye on what we uh, what our uh, so so when our paper is coming out. 
so uh, yeah, this is there is a new question. Uh, uh, is there any GitHub? Uh, uh, is there any, is there any GitHub project where our research work is being implement implement implemented, or maybe uh, is having all the latest changes? I'm looking for mobile gaming using UT 3D. So. Uh, for TDS project, uh, I think there are some uh, open source GitHub project to implement uh, some of the or some of the represent representative uh, TDS research work, uh, such as uh, yeah, I can just uh, send some of the uh, toolkit, such as uh, uh, ESPNet. So you can uh, check uh, the toolkit here. Yeah, so uh, this toolkit is uh, uh, basically a, a, a very general toolkit about the automatic speech recognition and a text-to-speech or some other uh, tasks such as voice conversion. Uh, yeah, so so some basic uh, speech uh, tasks are incorporated into this uh, repo. Uh, so you can have a, a start from this kind of uh, GitHub repo, or you can just search in the GitHub to find some popular, uh, some repo with some uh, popular uh, stars. Okay, uh, so uh, yeah, uh, there is another advertisement that, uh, in this uh, summer, in this Ichika, uh, yeah, in this Ichika, Ichika uh, 2021 conference, we will give a tutorial about text-to-speech, and the time is uh, a quarter of day. So we will talk more about the neural text-to-speech and the whole summary and a whole survey of the neural text-to-speech synthesis in this area. So uh, if you also attend the each so IJCAI conference uh, this summer, uh, so you are invited to attend this uh, uh, tutorial. So I have sent the link into the uh, question, so you can uh, find our tutorial uh, co uh, uh, called Neural Text-to-Speech uh, uh, Synthesis. Uh, okay, so there is a, another question. So, okay, so this is the last question that we can uh, discuss. Uh, so, is it possible to use ASR training data to help spontaneous TTS? Uh, yeah, so uh, because uh, for spontaneous TTS, uh, uh, yeah, for spontaneous TTS, uh, so the problem is that uh, the general the, the data or the standard data to train the TTS model is the uh, 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 audio book or is a reading style. So you usually ask uh, people to record or to to read a book or read something in an audio or in an in in audio studio or recording studio. So the the speech is very uh, uh, normal and it's, it's reading style. But if you want to train a spontaneous, sti spontaneous style, and you need to find some data that is, that is very similar to the spontaneous. And ASR data is a very good way because the ASR, ASR data is usually collected uh, through the maybe people talking, conversation, or, or giving a lecture. So in this scenario, the, the, the style of the data is very spontaneous. I think this, this, this kind of data can help uh, the, uh, to, to build the TDS model. But but you you, you should uh, uh 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 should take care about the quality. Because usually the SR, SR data SR speech usually uh, has poor quality. Uh, this can make it a challenge to train a TTS model. Yep. Okay. So I think uh, this is all the uh, questions. And if uh, if the audience have there are more questions you can uh, contact uh, us uh, through email. So I have already uh, uh, left the email into the uh, in the in the uh, presentation in the, in the video. 
And uh, okay, so the last advertisement <laughs> that uh, we uh, in Microsoft Research Asia, so we are machine learning uh, group, we are uh, continuing uh, conducting the research on text to speech or some other natural language and speech uh, related research. So if you are interested in our uh, uh, so to to do a, an internship in Microsoft Research Asia, so you can contact you can contact uh, me, uh, and also if you are just happen to uh, graduate this year or, or next year, and if you if you are, are finding a job, if you want to do research, so you can also uh, contact us about the or FT job. Okay, uh, thank you. Thank you. So this is all about this uh, webinar. Th thank you for your attending. Bye-bye. Uh,